Hi there, it's Marzena. I am aware that my dark creations are definitely more desired than my cute ones, but I still have to make a few sweet fairies for my mom. And today I will be making one of those. The spring slash summer themed bee fairy. I still hope you will enjoy the process. Okay, less talk, more work. Let's dive in. I was thinking of using Luna Moth because of her color and insect-like body. But I only have one, so I saved her for some other project. My next choice was Golia Yelps. I have never customized her before and she has my favorite face cut, I think. But then my sister said that her body is too skinny for a bee. B needs to be more round and fluffy. Ugh. I am younger after all, so I listen to my older sister. And that's how I decided to invest a little bit more in this project and I bought an OMG surprise doll. Hmm, <laughs> yeah, nice surprise. As you can see, her body is way more curvy than the Monster High body. But her head is preposterous. It doesn't fit my style. So I am gonna make a hybrid with this limbless honey swamps head. I want to give my bee a similar hairstyle, so at least I know that her face will pull it off. I will be also using this headless ever after high body as an additional arms donor. So our team is finally selected. This time I started with sending down OMG's nipples because, oh my god, they were gouging my eyes. Now I could remove the hair by cutting them as short as possible. I did the same with the second doll. I used my new stove to heat some water up. I poured the boiling water to a glass vessel because I didn't want the plastic body touch a hot metal. I arranged some friendly spa slash yoga time and after one or two minutes the heads were soft enough to remove them safely from the neck pegs. Be careful not to burn your hands! I took my surgical pliers and removed the hair plugs from the head by scrapping them and pulling them out through the neck hole. I didn't have to do it with OMG head, but I did it anyway. And I was indeed surprised, because I'm used to the glue and the sticky yuckiness inside the doll's head. But here, there was no glue. Pulling out the gooey mass is like pulling snooze from an old man's nose. But pulling out this was like pulling pubes from the drain. I chose the first one, but it's just a personal preference. After a long, long struggle, I could finally wipe out the factory faces with 100% acetone. As you can see, I was trying not to destroy my nails. It's not that common for me to paint my nails, but it's a sunflower season and I am addicted. So my natural nails are naturally black and disgusting right now. Small price to pay, if you ask me. For shrinking the head, I chose the slow shrinking method this time. It's supposed to be a way more gentle, safe and efficient method than the fast one that I normally use. I will put a link in the description box to a great tutorials about head shrinking and rerouting. And here is our head after 4 days. 
pretty nice. I decided to try some more new stuff this time and instead of gluing the hair wefts, I did my very first ever reroute. First I painted the scalp, creating black and yellow circles, just like on a bee's body. It will guide me with the hair colors. From brushed out yarn I created the hair. I made a reroot tool from a cut needle and an exacto knife handle. I took a gouging tool, poke a hole in the head. It was pretty hard at the time. I grabbed a small strand of hair with the rerouting tool and just pushed it into the hole. And so on and so on. After three hours I have this. Ugh, the nightmare continues. Just kidding. It wasn't that bad, but it took over 10 hours to finish the whole head. And I only broke like three needles. Not bad. After that I just needed to pour some glue inside the head so the hair strands won't come out and I spread it with the help of a q-tip. Then I let it dry till the next day. Time to introduce the head to the body. Her neck hole has shrunk a lot and the OMG neck is quite wide so I needed to carefully widen the hole with my micromotor with a milling cutter. I also reduced the neck pack, just in case. And it fits! I secured her hair with a pin down fabric and a plastic wrap and covered her body with a towel burrito. And then the struggle began. First I put a few layers of yellow acrylic paint on her face but it ended up just awful. The face looked more green than yellow and the brush strokes were visible and ugly. It just had to go. Then I spent like an hour cleaning up my old airbrush just to find out I got only a few drops of yellow airbrush paint left. And there was still something wrong with it cause the result looked even worse than the brush strokes. I tried few layers of the skin color base and then the yellow paint. Ugh, next! Sponge and the white paint? No! Brush and the white paint? Finally! Ugh. Two layers of white, two layers of yellow from some other brand and let's call it a success. I sprayed the face three times with Mr. Super Clear Matte Varnish and evened the color as much as I could with soft pastels. I added some contouring and blushing, sprayed the face with MSC once more and started with the eyes. It's not like it was the easiest face up, the head was pretty small, vinyl was hard and Honey Swamp has a really defined eye sculpture. But you know what? I'm starting to feel pretty confident with those repaints. I'm still making some errors and mistakes, but they are small, my girls are not squinting that much anymore and I'm more and more pleased with the final result. This is only my 10th face up, so I know that I still have a lot to learn.
As you can see, I gave my bee girl a honey colored eyes and black lips. After adding those black lips, I sprayed her again with MSC cause I didn't want to smear that black pencil all over her face. Then I could build up the colors, add red to the water lines and black to her lashes and pupils. I was switching back to chalk pastels from time to time to add some shading and more blushing. I wasn't sure if I should paint her lashes this time, but I did eventually. First with a sharp pencil and finally with black acrylic paint. As the last step, I added some highlights and catch lights with white acrylics. Sprayed her face once again with MSC and her face up was done. I could finally unwrap her completely. Her hairline needed some touch ups, but overall she looked okay. Then I wrap her head again to protect the face from the damages, paints and sealant. I quickly sanded down her body and started with the modifications. First of all, her hands weren't mobile enough for the pose I had in mind. So I removed them and snip snap away the attachment thingies. I also curved a bit more space near the elbows, for the forearms. Of course our tiny bug lady needed her third pair of limbs. Good luck with that if she thought I would buy another OMG doll, but fortunately I had this headless ever after high body that I showed you before. With some length modifications they will be perfect. OMG didn't have a very good articulation in their rubber legs, so I made a deep cut in one of them so I could achieve the desired pose. With a tiny milling cutter I made the holes for wire reinforcements. And of course I drank a lot cause it's insanely hot in our new apartment. After gluing every piece together, I marked and drilled the holes for the additional arms. The thickness of those arms was, of course, uneven, so I sent them down. I covered some of her joints with epoxy. And you can clearly see the evolutions of my pretty fingernails. I smoothed the edges with my fingertips and a little bit of water. 
I poured some hot glue into her torso and I inserted the additional arms in the holes slash sockets. I could finally finish her pose and cover the rest of the joints with epoxy sculpt. On the next morning, I could sand down the epoxy with a nail buffer to blend it even better with a doll's body. I washed the dust away and dried her with a kitchen towel. While painting her body yellow, I realized that I forgot about her bee butt. I even prepared the holes for the attachments earlier. Oopsie daisy! I also made holes for the wings earlier, but I decided to make two more. I've got this styrofoam ball and it was great for the bee butt. I attached it to the doll with a wire and glue and covered it with epoxy. I also added the stinger. Cute! Again, I needed to sand it down a little and then finally I could paint the whole body. After three coats, I managed to cover the green epoxy to the black. I decided on black hands, forearms, feet and lower legs, like gloves and high socks. I also added the stripes over the black limbs and a black body thingy because she looks kinda inappropriate naked. Before I painted the legs, I deepened the hole in her leg and glued the wire inside. It will be a stand attachment. It wasn't easy due to her rubbery legs. After that I finished the legs and also painted the black stripes and the sting on the bee butt. After applying three layers of MSC I blushed the body with soft pastels, added some highlights and sprayed it with MSC once more. A proper bee butt needs to be fluffy, right? So I prepared some fluff in yellow and black and glued it to the stripes. I put three layers of fluff waiting with each one to dry before putting the next one. Then I covered them with one last layer of glue to secure it even more. I found this method in Mozakito and Delightful's videos, so be sure to check those girls out. I will leave the links in the description. I placed the first layer of fluff with my fingers and after it dried I brushed the excess away. After that I switched to a brush, cause it was more precise.
to the hair. I used my old telescopic radio antenna and hair straightener to make tiny curls, because I wanted to give her an afro-like hairstyle. And this method was really great for my first doll. I was really careful not to mix hair colors in each strand. I heated up the antenna, wrapped the hair strand around it, and after a few seconds I got a pretty curl. Here I started separating yellow layers from black layers and then making curls after that. After six and a half hours, the curls were done. I brushed them out for more puffy look and gave her a haircut after that. The mix of colors still didn't look as I wanted, so again I was separating the color parts from each other, styled them and cut them a little bit more, starting from the top of the head. Keep your dolls safe from the sticky hairspray. That was a stressful part. I definitely should have done it before the face up. I took a picture and decided that her hair is still a little bit too long. So cute! Time for the wings. I used the same method that I used when making my bone fairy's wings. So first I made patterns and covered them in plastic wrap. As you can see I managed to tame my wire with a bobby pins. I used my UV resin on top of the wire reinforcement and I filled all the pattern with it. Then cured it under the UV lamp. After it cured, I removed it from foil and covered the bottom side with resin too. After all the wings were done, I sanded down the edges with fine milling cutter to remove the excess resin and get rid of any sharp edges that might cut my fingers. After wiping the dust away, I drew the wings patterns with the permanent marker. I tried to make exact same pattern as the actual bees have. I preserved the pattern under a thin layer of resin. Then I made a mistake by tracking the pattern on the other side and it gave the wings a weird double effect due to the resin thickness. It worked with Angelina film, but not with resin. So I remade the bigger wings from scratch and also gave them a made-up pattern because I wasn't a big fan of the original one. Sorry, nature. At the end I covered everything with a clear UV nail polish. From Warbla Black Art, I made the antennas and painted them black. Then I added some shine to them, to the sting, eyes and lips.
and here she is, with all her parts. The only thing left to do was her stand. You already know that fresh sunflower seeds are my little addiction, so my little bee will be standing on a sunflower. Because why not? I made the wooden base and covered it with warbler. Then I sculpted all the seeds and petals. I used Warbla Black Art, so I already had the base color. This video is already long enough, so I painted the stand off camera with acrylic paints and sealed it with MSC. Glued the bee fairy to her sunflower and voila! She's done! I must say, I am very proud of how she turned out. The hair alone took me a few days to finish, but I think it was worth it. Her hairstyle looks exactly how I imagined and it suits the bee fairy perfectly in my opinion. I also love her fluffy bee butt and her sunflower stand turned out great. In the end, I am happy that my sister suggested that this doll should have more meat on her bones. And what do you think about her? Do you like this kind of hybrid of monster high head with more curvy body? Please let me know what you think in the comments. I love to read all your thoughts and tips. If you do like this video, give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel with the bell to get all the notifications about my newest projects. Thank you all for watching and see you soon! Coincidence? I don't think so.